Hi, welcome back to the Rebuild Shop. Uh, sponsored by Bomber Command Museum of Canada. This is our second episode and we're going to uh, primarily go through what is being done now and how we're progressing on the spar. So what's been going on in the last, uh, last week and a half? Well, as you can see, a lot of the structure is gone now. We're just down to the spar. Here, as if you might want to see, here's another thing that we, we have to deal with. These, uh, they had a very simple and effective way of locking bolts and nuts together. They used a pneumatic peen and dist as distro distorted the, um, the threaded area so that it cannot come loose. So we are now drilling or uh, grinding a flush surface so that we can actually start a drill so that we can drill down far enough to remove the end of the bolt and then punch it out or try to. It might be in a lot of drilling but uh, this is where we're at. It's what, what part of the airplane plane is this? This is part of the engine pickup. And, so uh, it has to be strong because it's uh, holding the airplane together, but it's uh, bound to take a lot of vibration, right? Yes, it is. What are these things right here? You see these? Uh, they look like threads or something. Well, that's, uh, that's how aluminum deteriorates. It's called exfoliation. It's, uh, aluminum is very grainy. It's, al it's almost like a wood, to put it into a paraphrase. Um, as it corrodes, it starts to separate the uh, the grains and they come apart and it's called exfoliation. That's just due to the elements and like we previously said it was in a, a salt water environment where it came from but it's uh, it's really not that bad for the amount of time. So what else has been going on? Uh, pretty well this is it. Uh, we're just about ready to extract the spar caps and take the center section out. And then after that we move to uh, phase two, which will be removing this, the uh, uh, front spar from the wing box sections, which are over at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. Once we have that, then we can start building our tooling jigs and table so that we can start rebuilding the spar again. How long do you think it's going to take you to do this, these initial steps to, to get things in order? Well, I'm, you know, I'm quite happy with the amount of time and how fast it really is going because um, NA337, for instance, it was a complete section. All we had to do was take it apart and restore it and put it back together. And that took about... Uh, I would say close to a year and a half with a couple of uh, full-time volunteers giving me a hand. Now the problem here is I'm doing it by myself but as I said you learn lessons from the first one you know what to do on the second one and like I said I'm very surprised how quickly it is coming apart and I can't give an estimate how much time I can have like a, a whole wing section done. But, uh, like I said, it's coming very quickly. What are these plans here about? Oh, I just brought these out so that uh, people can see how close a Hastings and a Halifax really are. Now, this is the center section that we're restoring. And from here, right across here, I may take a piece of paper. This is where it's been cut on each end. So these sections here are the next part. But as you can see this structure, which is what is right in front of you, it is, here's a cross section of the Halifax. Now mind you, the engine mounts look different because this is a Merlin engine and this is a Hercules radial engine. But as you can see right here, the structure is identical the whole front wing spar as well as the rear wing spar are identical. Now I've got much more intricate big shop drawings but they'll, 
they half of them will take up like three quarters of this piece of spar so it you know it's really hard to bring them out and you know video how important are these pieces of paper in front of you uh they're quite important because not only do you get uh to see visual things but you get to see dimensions as well like for instance it shows you the center line of the aircraft the exact distance to the uh, pickup point of the uh, intermediate wing in inches, top and bottom. It gives you all the locations for the stiffeners, and that's how it's measured, you know, in inches to the stations. Now, also, these are not uh, a piece of aluminum that has been put into a brake to create that 90 degree brake. These are actually extrusions. Now that also gives us all the information that we need to make new extrusions. And this is exactly how, once it's, because it's been severed, that I can actually make a tooling jig working from the center out that I can put a pin to align the ends, the pickup points, exactly on the spar caps so it'll pick up exactly onto the intermediate wing. So show me a point on the, on the uh, diagram and then show me that same point on the actual structure. Well, because this is, has been cut off on both ends. This, however, this is the rear spar, by the way. It is not the front spar. Okay. But here you can see this oh, section is what you're looking at right here to this point on each side, that's where it has been cut. Okay, now show me that on the actual one. Show that to me on the plane where you just pointed. On this piece? Yep. That's right here. This is the center line of the aircraft right here, going up. And this is the point that I showed you right here. In fact, that's the vertical support member that is on the ends. Do you know anybody else in town or any place in the world that uh, people are actually trying to uh, construct an entire World War II bomber in their front yard? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> but here we have some cross sections of uh, Halifax and Hastings so that you can actually see what the aircraft structure looks like. That's the Hastings on top? Yes, it is. And that's a Halifax Mark III. And as you pointed out last week, uh, you pointed out the tail, uh, the tail is different. Yes, exactly. Like I said, it's a vertical fin. Oh, that's on the Hastings? Yep. Plus, on each side, it has a horizontal stabilizer that is bolted to the fuselage. Whereas, again, the Halifax, it has two vertical fins for the rudders and it has a one-piece horizontal stabilizer that goes right through the aircraft. Hi, I also meant to uh, mention that uh, Merga Industrial Industries is now on board with us. They are uh, supplying us with tools such as braces and drills. Uh, Mr. Mercier, who is the president of the company, he emailed me this morning and let me know that he has uh, let's call it a care package for us of uh, drills, cutting wheels, grinding wheels and different other tools that we need initially. So they are giving us a lot of help and I just like to say thank you. And we'll see those tools next time. Yep. Okay well that's great. Well that's program number two of uh, the rebuild shop for the Bomber Command Museum of Canada and Halifax 57 Rescue. See you next see, week George. See you next week.